Hey y'all and welcome back for another video. If it's your very first time here, my name is Bianca. I am an ambulatory care pharmacist. I do videos on pharmacy, natural hair, lifestyle, all the things. But I do have a pharmacy playlist. So if you're interested in the profession, career options, pharmacy school, how to become a pharmacist, all of those topics, residency, all of that is in the playlist. So make sure that you check that out. But today's video is all about ambulatory care. Some of the things that I do at my job, what type of jobs you can have as an ambulatory care pharmacist, and all of that good stuff. So if you're interested in ambulatory care or just curious to see what pharmacists in this space do, stay tuned. Get your life, plan it out. You can go as far as you can train. Edges lay, curls popping, she's a doctor of the first thing I want to touch on is what is ambulatory care? So when you think of an ambulatory care pharmacist, I want you to think outpatient. So usually you're either embedded in a physician office, you're working in a pharmacist run clinic, like all pharmacists, or you're working in a hospital based clinic, still outpatient, but built in a hospital. And you may also be able to do some telehealth or remote work from home as an ambulatory care pharmacist. So the patients aren't too sick that they can't get to you but they do have disease states that need to be managed. And a lot of these are chronic, meaning lifelong. Hours as an ambulatory care pharmacist are usually eight to five, eight to four, nine to four, no weekends. So Monday through Friday, you don't usually take work home. Like once you leave, you're leaving for the day and coming back in fresh the next morning, unless you have admin tasks that you have to do a presentation or something of that nature. I usually never take homework. So I have my notes so I don't forget any talking points, but the next thing I want to touch on is what type of patient care or task do pharmacists in ambulatory care do? You are going to be managing chronic disease states, so COPD, asthma, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, also specialty disease states, HIV, rheumatoid arthritis. Depending on what the patient is coming to you for, you may have to talk about diet and nutrition, so you might have some education there about lifestyle. You may also educate the patients about their medications, maybe show them how to use their insulin pen, their injectable, show them kind of the proper site to administer it, how do you clean the area, what to do if you miss a dose, all of those things, expected side effects and how to manage them. All of that is covered within the visit. In addition to all of that, you may solely be tasked with kidney and liver dosing or renal and hepatic dosing is how we refer to it in the pharmacy world. But pretty much if the patient's kidneys are declining, some medications are eliminated through the kidney and so you don't want it to build up in the patient and harm them, so they might need a reduced dose. And sometimes it's just acute, meaning for a short period of time that you need to um, adjust their dose. But as an ambulatory care pharmacist, you might get information on a patient and say, hey, can you review their meds? Their kidney function is now X, Y, Z. And so that's also something that we do during visits or as a consult. And that brings me to the next thing that you would do or could do as an ambulatory care pharmacist. So a consult is not necessarily a patient that's scheduled on your schedule for the day, but it may just be a message that's sent from the doctor. Hey, I just saw Bianca today and she was experiencing headache and night sweats and we just recently started these three medications. Do any of those interfere or do any of those cause this side effect? And so you never saw the patient, but based on the information the doctor gave you, you're able to review their chart and answer and say, oh, you know what? This medicine does cause night sweats or because you discontinued this one, that's probably leading to the night sweats. And so a consult is pretty much a question from another provider, another discipline regarding patient care. You could also help with medication access. So there are programs that the companies who make the medicines have for medicines that are too expensive or patients who do not have insurance. So patient assistance is one of them where you basically have to get the patient to apply. So filling out the application, helping them navigate through that. Here in North Carolina, we have a program called NC Medicist, which is just specific to our state, but the medications are able to be shipped to patients for free. So all of these programs, if they have insurance, you can look up copay cards through the drug companies online. All of that falls under medication assistance and medication access. And so again, you might get a consult about, hey, this patient is having a hard time affording XYZ. They are uninsured or they have this insurance. Can you help? So that's something that you also may be able to do as an ambulatory care pharmacist. Prior authorizations. I had to look down and make sure I didn't forget this one. This is a big one. So PAs or prior authorizations is pretty much when you send a prescription to the pharmacy, their insurance does not want to pay for it because it's too expensive or they prefer another drug in that same class, like another drug that does the same thing. And so as a pharmacist, you have to go through the patient's chart, 
there's a portal called cover my meds or sometimes you talk to the insurance directly and basically communicate the information well their blood pressure is this or their a1c is that they failed all these other options this is why they need this medicine just justifying why the, the insurance company should pay for it and then once they pay for it or excuse me once they review your information they approve or deny it and once it's approved then you can call the pharmacy back and say hey this medicine is approved go ahead and let the patient pick it up so that's in short i guess that wasn't long but <laughs> that's pretty much a, what a prior authorization is or a pa i'm gonna pause here leave any questions that you have below that's how i tell talk to my patients like once i finish explaining something i'm, so I'm gonna pause here i know we talked about a lot so what questions do you have for me <laughs> Not me, I like I'm y'all's patient. I mean, I'm y'all's pharmacist. Okay, so moving on. I will say, because I'm biased, y'all know I love ambulatory care. It was hard for me to come up with cons, but take these pros and cons as if you are coming fresh into the profession and you're trying to decide what job to choose. So I tried to think of cons and pros of people who are who were like me, excuse me, before I decided that I wanted to do ambulatory care. So Pros, there are a lot of patient interaction opportunities. Like you will talk to patients day in and day out, especially if you're doing disease states that require a lot of education, a lot of back and forth between you and the patient. So those 20 minutes to one hour visits, I mean all of that. Like I've sat in visits with patients for hours, maybe not hours, but <laughs> I've sat in a patient room for at least 40 minutes easily, especially with diabetes. Those conversations can get very lengthy, but then you also have some offices where it's a 20 minute slot and you're out. And so depending on what job you take, but nonetheless, you're going to be able to speak with patients a lot. So if you enjoy front facing patient interactions, really building that rapport with patients, ambulatory care is a great option for you. Also pros, no weekends. Like you can have your weekends to travel, relax. You don't bring work home nine times out of 10. So that's a plus. And then the last pro that I have is you don't have to stand on your feet all day. Like that was an A plus in my books because some of the other professions in pharmacy, you are on your feet day in and day out. Like the whole eight hour shift, 10 hour shift, you're standing on your feet. Ambulatory care, you have a desk. Sometimes you even have an office where you can go in and pretty much do your charting, do everything, especially if you're remote or doing telehealth work. Yeah, you are definitely not on your feet. So those are the pro pros that I have for the profession as far as ambulatory care is related. The cons or things to consider, as I would like to say, is you may be the only pharmacist. So sometimes that matters, right? If you don't have someone to bounce ideas off of, you're kind of the final stop. <laughs> so some people like to have a colleague to say, hey, I was thinking about starting this medicine on Ms. Jones. Can you take a look at this and see like, would you do this? Or I'm thinking about doing this regimen for her warfarin, would you do that? And so it's nice sometimes to have someone to bounce ideas off of. Now, some ambulatory care settings, you do have other pharmacists, but there are a lot where you are the only pharmacist. So definitely something to consider when you're job hunting. Also, this was a pro, but it also could be a con, and that's the amount of patient interactions that you have. It can be tiring. Like, you're going day to day seeing patients, especially if you're in a focused disease state, like you just do diabetes education. A lot of times you're talking about similar things. Granted, everybody's personality is different, right? Your patients are going to come in with different stories, different lifestyle interventions, different things they're eating, all of that. But the gist of it is the same. And so if you're having a bad day, if you got a headache, that doesn't matter. Like you still have to go into the patient's room and have that full visit. You are essentially the provider for that day. So they're coming to see you. They're not coming to see anybody else. And so this falls primarily into like the chronic disease state job. So yeah, that's a con and pro based on the personality that you have as a pharmacist. And then also in some settings, it could be redundant. Like coag, I'll use anticoagulation as, as an example. All of your patients are on warfarin unless you just recently switched them to a DOAC. Or if, you, if they're on a DOAC like Xarelto, Eliquis, you're not going to see them as often. So your warfarin visits, you literally have a template. Every single patient you ask the same exact questions to, even if you just saw them a week ago, same exact questions, same exact workflow every single time. And a lot of times these clinics have protocols, so you already know what you're doing with them. Now, if you like that boom, boom, boom type of job where you're going in, you're going out, you already know what your day looks like, you have 15 patients scheduled, you already know that their INR was therapeutic for the last five times, so they're probably gonna be therapeutic today and they're good to go for the next month. Like some people like that pace, 
Me personally, I get really tired with the same exact thing every single day. So I like my days to be a little different. So all ambulatory care jobs are not redundant, but there are some that are very, very redundant. So when you're job hunting, just make sure that you know what you're going to be doing day in and day out. Other than that, that is pretty much all I have as far as it relates to what I do as a pharmacist in ambulatory care. Now, I am an ambulatory care pharmacist. I've been one going on five years and I've worked in, let's see, as a resident, of course, we rotate through different sites. So I've seen a lot of different professions within ambulatory care there. And then I moved on to two separate jobs after that. So I've been in a lot of different spaces. So I am going to do another ambulatory care visit or a visit. <laughs> See, I'm still the pharmacist with y'all. I'm going to do another ambulatory care video where I talk about a job description as it relates to some of the other job titles that I've held. But this is kind of like an umbrella ambulatory care in a nutshell. So if you have any additional questions for me, please leave them below. I would love to hear from y'all. As always, thank you so, so much for watching today's video. If you have not already subscribed, make sure to consider subscribing and joining the fam. I do pharmacy videos once a month, so please check back check my playlist first, but then also check back for next month's video. Talk to y'all later. Bye.